Welsh, editor at large for the Libertarian Reason magazine, Jason Johnson, MSNBC political contributor, as well as politics editor at The Root, and Governor John Hickenlooper of the state of Colorado. Governor, I go to you first. <clears throat> DACA is an issue for every single state. Think about what it means for all of those dreamers who put themselves out there, who came out from the shadows because the government said, come out, tell us who you are. What is it going to mean going forward that our government reached out, those people made themselves public, and now they're in a quandary? Well, there's no question they shouldn't be a, bar <clears throat> a bargaining chip. I mean, these, most of these kids came here when they were one or two or three years old. They have no other country, no other home to go back to. So to to put them into this situation of every week there's a different demand and it's a negotiating uh, from one side to the other, everyone's drawing lines in the sand, that's crazy. Uh, and the anxiety and, and psychological harm that, it, I mean, most of these kids are now 15, 20, 25, it just puts them in an, in an almost un, unbelievable situation. And what do you say to the hardcore Trump supporter that says, that sounds really tough, but my child who was born in the United States, who's an American citizen just like me, they should have priority over those people. What's the response to that true Trumper? Well, I think there are all kinds of priorities that people born in this country have r remarkable level of advantages and, and you know, I, don't, I mean, there's a list longer than my arm. The, the bottom line is that, you know, this is a small subset of, of the immigration issue. And maybe, I mean, ideally, this should be the time when Congress steps up and does comprehensive reform, right? Looks at the whole issue and says, all right, we're going to balance this out, balance that out, and begin. You know, when I first ran, got into politics in 2003, I ran for mayor. I'd never run for student council. This was an issue in 2003 that there was people were, how are we going to address this, this immigration issue? Let's finally do it. Okay, let's finally do it, but we're backed up against a government shutdown. We know we're not going to get com comprehensive reform. We're going to get a, 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 a deal, possibly. What do you think a deal is going to look like here? I mean, is this about dreamers versus a border wall, a very unpopular border wall with people in government, not just President Trump's base? Keep in mind that Donald Trump has already caved on this issue several times in terms of funding the border wall. This was supposed to be... You mean the be... wall that was supposed to be paid for by, by, by Mexico? Mexico? So yes. I don't know why we're even discussing who pays for it. This was supposed to be in every single one of the continuing continuing resolutions that have been passed uh, temporarily over the over the past 12 months. It hasn't been. Every time they've come up to the brink, they're like, eh, no, let's just we'll table that and talk about it. I think the thing that gets sacrificed is you're not going to build a total border wall because it's physically impossible to do it, and $18 billion is too much money for anyone to spend. So you might get a small chunk for a few miles of a border wall, but the thing, and it's a big thing that I think will end, is uh, discussion about ending chain migration. That's a big change to the immigration system. The people who are in that room. Jeff Flake is in that room. There's a lot of people, gang of eight people who are in that room who are not about to rewrite chain migration rules here. You might see a sacrifice of the visa lottery system, which originally, let's be clear, was, was invented by New York legislators to make sure that the Irish and Italians were still being represented in the immigration. That's 50,000 people a year. That's not a large number. Uh, if, if Trump can get that little symbol, maybe he'll take that and end the chain migration and not get the full wall. I think that's the contours of the deal. Nobody really wants to shut down, so I don't think it's going to happen. All right, then maybe I'm being delusional here, but is there a chance that Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi already know what a compromise is going to look like? And really, this is about figuring out what Trump's base will stomach? Yeah, pretty much. Look, at, at this point, not only has Trump sort of punted on this border wall several different times, but there's no practical way that it can be done, and everyone knows that before they even... This isn't just a matter of it's unpopular people in the government. You literally have Republicans at the border who say it'd be bad for commerce. This is, this is Donald Trump's version of privatizing Social Security. He keeps saying he's going to do it. It's not necessarily going to end up happening. So I suspect, look, they're going to come up with some temporary funding. They're going to say, all right, we're going to keep the government going. I don't even know if there's that much incentive to come up with any sort of comprehensive immigration bill, because I can imagine Democrats saying we don't want to give Trump a victory uh, during a midterm election year. And I can imagine Republicans saying we don't want to alienate or anger our are based during an election year. So I don't think either one's going to happen. Listen, in terms of border security, President Trump does have a feather in his cap. You are seeing it, uh, illegal immigration down. Right. People are scared to cross the border. So there is a positive without a wall. Governor, I turn to you for the raw politics of this, because you are someone who truly reaches across the aisle. You do run a purple state. <laughs> how does this work? How can how where do you see a path to work together here? Well, because think, people want bipartisanship. It's what they voted for. 
I think people, both sides, have to stop, you know, being absolutist. And they've got to say, all right, I have to have this, and this is a victory. Let's get away from who gets the victory and who gets the loss and figure out what the compromise is. If you look at Trump's biggest supporters, a lot of that's rural Colorado, rural America, and they're the ones, I mean, one of our best trading partners to maintain commodity prices is Mexico. We need a strong relationship with Mexico. Let's put all that in together. And again, building a wall is such a waste of money. There's 10 other ways to, to you know, secure the border. I think most people would agree that we need to secure the border one way or another. But why, build, why waste that money building a wall when it alienates one of our best trading partners? So is it that someone is not willing to have this conversation with the president about the value of the wall? I mean, you build the wall, all you need to do is build a ladder one foot higher. Will Hurd from the state of Texas, just yeah, I want to say it was yesterday, said people that are dealing with this issue know that it is a third century solution to a 20th century problem and it's not going to fix anything long term. That's a Republican saying that. Why doesn't someone simply sit down with the president and explain it? This idea of the wall isn't something that is core to him for years. Sam, whatever his face is, Nunberg, Nunberg came up with it during the campaign to try it out at a rally and it stuck. Well, it's core to his how he differentiated himself from the field in the GOP primaries. He inserted discussion about, you know, Mexico is sending us their worst people uh, in his initial escalating down, escalatoring down into our lives uh, speech there. And so he sees this and perceives this. And you can see this in the transcripts when he talks with the president of Mexico. He's like, my voters, this is why they voted for me. So he is, he feels the pressure of this, regardless of whether he has these deeply held views. He didn't. I mean, he, right. he said Romney lost because of his, of his maniacal views on immigration in an interview in November 2012. It's amazing how yeah, look it up. Newsmax. Donald Trump said Mitt Romney lost because of his maniacal views on self-deportating, self-deporting immigration. Absolutely on the record there. Trump flipped. It's not something that people talk about, but it's right there in the record. It is amazing. He can say anything and none of it sticks. It's stunning. Which is where I think this really kind of comes down to. When you talk about having conversations with the president, you would think that any pollster would say, going back to what he said last year, there's nothing you can do to drop below about 35%. So you don't have to hold on to this. You can walk down the street and shoot someone in the head. You can engage in all sorts of terrible behavior. There's a certain amount of Trump's base that's never going to leave. And I think if people reminded him of that, he would get off of some of these more ridiculous ideas because he's never going to lose a certain number of his voters. Governor, let's talk Democrats for a moment and the threat of a possible shutdown. Could Democrats overplay their hand here? No one wants to see a shutdown. I know Democrats are feeling great momentum after Virginia, after Alabama, but it's not like they've really got their act together with a, with a clear mission and a message. Yeah, but I don't think Democrats are going to be responsible for closing government down. I mean, they've been reasonable all the way along. I mean, it used to be Republicans were the ones that always said, you know, government doesn't work. We want government to work better. Now, now Republicans appear not to want any government at all. And Democrats... And they love debt. <laughs> yeah, right. They love debt. Exactly. Look at it. Uh, and Democrats are the ones who are saying, wait, we've got to make government more efficient, more effective, and we don't mind looking at ways to, to maybe make it a little smaller and still have it do a lot. I don't think gov uh, the Democrats are going to be the ones to get in the way of this, you know, whatever the agreement turns out to be. Well, it's going to be a big meeting today. Steve Bannon said this morning he didn't think there was enough hardliners going to be at the White House for this immigration conversation. Well, Steve, I'm pretty sure you lost your pass to get into the White House. Okie doke. Up next, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. President Trump renominating people who did not get through the